So I generally remember the extra renal manifestations as GALA, G for the GI manifestations which range from diverticuli, uh, perforation to hernia, A for aneurysms presenting with intracranial or subarachnoid hemorrhage, another A for aortic regurgitation and L for liver cysts. So any patient with family history of polycystic kidney disease definitely needs to be screened. We should remember that the incidence of simple cysts increase with, it, with age. So anybody with a renal cyst on ultrasound is not a candidate who needs to be suspected of polycystic kidney disease. Anybody with a family history, yes, but always remember simple cysts increase with age. This is why often when we do an ultrasound for an older patient, it is very common to find incidentally picked up renal cysts in them. So there are specific ultrasound criteria in asymptomatic patients. In patients above 60 years of age, again as I said the criteria varies age wise because the incidence of simple cysts increases with age. This is why for us to diagnose polycystic kidney disease in an older individual there needs to be much more number of cysts. So, in a patient above 60 years of age, four or more cysts in each kidney is diagnostic of polycystic kidney disease. In a patient who is going to be between 40 to 60 years, more than two cysts, two or more cysts in each kidney. So, this is easy to remember. So, anybody more than 60 years, you need to have four or more cysts in each kidney. In a patient between 40 to 60 years, you need to have half as much, two or more cysts, again same in each kidney. So in a patient between 15 to 40 years, this patient needs to have three or more cysts in both kidneys put together. That is what we need to remember. So three or more cysts, but in both kidneys, totally three or more cysts, both kidneys put together. This is the ultrasound diagnostic criteria. So beyond 60 years, four or more cysts in each kidney, 40 to 60 years, two or more cysts in each kidney and 15 to 40 years, three or more cysts in both kidneys. So ultrasound is more specific. However, CT and the T2 weighted MRI imaging are more sensitive. Genetic analysis is usually done when a patient with renal cysts plans to donate the kidney. That is when genetic analysis is done. Screening for intracranial aneurysms is again not routinely recommended. It can be done in patients with a positive family or a past history of a subarachnoid hemorrhage or an intracranial hemorrhage. So this is the ultrasound appearance of a patient with polycystic kidney disease. We are able to see uh, all these cysts which look like clusters of grapes on these images. Here again, this is a CT imaging where we are able to see bilaterally enlarged kidneys which are studded with cysts. So, we are able to see cysts everywhere in these kidneys bilaterally. Also, on this we are also able to appreciate the presence of liver cysts which are often accompanying the renal cysts. So, up to 83% of patients with polycystic kidney disease can have liver cysts. Remember that. So, what is the treatment? Usually, ACE inhibitors and ARBs are the treatment of choice because we can target both proteinuria and hypertension with inhibitors of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. So, they help in treating proteinuria, ACE, ARBs. In addition, for hypertension as well, the drugs of choice are going to be ACE inhibitors and ARBs. And then we also include the aldosterone antagonists. In addition, when a patient has hypertension, we prescribe low sodium diet and encourage physical activity. Remember, specifically in patients with polycystic kidney disease, calcium channel blockers and diuretics are not preferred. So, Inhibitors of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system are going to be the drugs of choice and it may be better to avoid diuretics and calcium channel blockers in this group of patients. Now, when a patient has hematuria, as I already mentioned, it could be because of either a stone or a cyst structure. 
So, put the patient on tranexamic acid, look for the cause, if it is a stone, treat appropriately, if it is a cyst structure, again, patient will require appropriate management. It may be good to stop uh, ACE inhibitors or ARBs if the patient is on one of these drugs because continuing these drugs in the context of hematuria, we may be pushing the patient into a prerenal failure. So, as I mentioned earlier, we have to be very careful while treating cyst infections or urinary infections in patients with polycystic kidney disease. This is because for two reasons. One, a lot of antibiotics do not have very good cyst penetration and therefore, it is very common to encounter treatment failure in these patients. Two, it is often common to overlook a diagnosis of urinary infection in these patients because the urine culture may be negative if the cyst is not going to be communicating with the urinary tract. So, how will you treat urinary infections in these patients? Cotrimoxazole and fluoroquinolones are the two antibiotics with very good cyst penetration. So, whenever you are treating a patient with suspected urinary infection or a suspected cyst infection in polycystic kidney disease, make sure that the patient is on any one of these two drugs. If the patient has pain, what may be helpful is cyst aspiration. The patient may opt for sclerotherapy or finally surgical drainage. Initial pain management is done with the routine analgesics like NSAIDs. Renal replacement therapy, what is going to be the renal replacement therapy of choice in these patients is renal transplantation. And finally, the only drug which has been approved by the FDA for treatment of autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease to slow the growth of kidney cysts is tolvaptan. So, remember that uh, during the etiopathogenesis of these cysts, we found that it was a vasopressin mediated process and that is the reason why vasopressin antagonists like tolvaptan has a role in slowing the growth of these kidney cysts. So, what are the differential diagnoses uh, of a patient with polycystic kidney disease? So, usually when you have a patient with multiple renal cysts, these are the various differential diagnoses. So, we already saw autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease where the mutation could be in PKD1 or the PKD2 gene present respectively in chromosome 6 and 4 coding for polycystin 1 and polycystin 2. Remember that patients with polycystic kidney disease are going to be having large kidneys with cortical and medullary cysts. 